Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is John Hammond. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background as to what this video is. So a few weeks ago, someone had reached out to me on Discord. I think his, uh, his handle was Muffin. <laughs> and he asked me like, hey, John, we really like the stuff that you do. Uh, would you be willing to do sort of like a podcast with us? Uh, I'm like, yeah, man, absolutely. Sure. Good by me. So um, they invited me to their Discord server, which I guess is a SEC army, and it, it was really, really cool because they just wanted to ask me a couple of questions. It was sort of like an interview style thing, and this is the podcast that we kind of put together. So uh, I wanted to share it with you in case you guys have any interest in it. Um, it's just me talking. <laughs> I don't know if that's if that is anything that might interest you, but here it is on the internet in case you do. Um, I'll try and include the questions down at the description with a timestamp as to what was asked when. So if you want to uh, get a little bit of insight into my brain, that's what this video is. So thank you guys. Uh, please enjoy and I'll see you later, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> enjoy the video. Thanks everybody. Hmm. So um, we'll start up now and uh, if you have a question or shall we in with now yeah i guess we can go ahead and get rolling thanks okay john so uh just before i start the recording it's just a little bit of introduction and then we proceed further okay okay that'd be cool thanks <clears throat> uh welcome guys and this side akash aka tarabai from psych army Welcome to our new podcast, and um, today we are going to talk about something that everyone wants to know about, and there have been a lot of questions every time we put some Instagram stories on this topic, which is for Capture the Flag, CDF. And to talk on this, today we have a really great guy. He's a star pen tester, a very known one. He's the guy who created this amazing tool called CTF Katana. It's on GitHub. You can check that out. It's a big time help and assistance for CDF players all around. He's also the guy with a mighty OSCP certification. So yeah, he can boast about it. He owns a CDF team as well. Well, that's something great. And he ranks, uh, the team ranks basically on the fifth, 50th position in the world. And yeah, he's a great guy to go through. And he's also a good friend of Live Overflow. And yeah, the guy we have today is John Hammond. How are you, John? Hey there. Hi, I'm doing I'm doing well. How about yourself, Akash? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, mate. Uh it's been thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really a pleasure talking to you and um thanks a lot for your time. So, John, today, uh, as you know about the topic that we are gonna talk a little bit about CTF, a little bit about the InfoSec domain, and some tips we're going to get for pen testing and other stuff. So would you like to give a brief about CDF and how it's, you know, how it's effective in enhancing the skill set for a beginner? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, so I guess I don't really need to put out the background because I'm sure a lot of the audience and listeners might already know what a capture the flag is. Uh, but I guess I'll do it anyway, just, <laughs> just for context. So a capture the flag is kind of a gamified competition within cybersecurity where there are kind of challenges or tasks or really just exercises where you, the player, are kind of given a prompt and, and something to do that might be involving some sort of technology or some kind of computer system. And maybe it's just a puzzle. It, it kind of varies in kind of the extent of what it is, but uh, you'll be tasked with maybe exploiting some vulnerability or deciphering some cryptography or finding some hidden messages uh, inside of media like steganography, tons and tons of stuff. And it's all gamified in that there's a scoreboard. There's a little bit of a leaderboard. So you have, some motivation to keep trying and keep trying to solve other problems because that'll help encourage hey that player to i don't know keep <laughs> learning and, and get better so honestly i think that's awesome at enhancing one skill because a lot of times with the capture the flag you kind of have a really small and narrow and specific uh cybersecurity flaw or something some technology some technique that's just distilled down mm -hmm. And that challenge is trying to emphasize it and highlight it so that you can learn and be a little bit smarter, even with real world stuff, with information security. 
And that I, I don't know. I think that just that does it in a great way because it is a game. It is gamified, and it's it's really engaging. Yeah, right. So yeah, CT has CT has like help in engaging into activities and performing like real time stuff dealing with different kind of challenges as we talked about different kind of stuff like cryptography technography and etc right so um i also want to know like you made this great tool city of katana so can you also shed some light on it like how do you think it's gonna bring um like some help or some sort of assistance in terms of cdfs and to the cdf players yeah no absolutely you know, this is this is funny it's like we're, we're starting off <laughs> with the bang we're getting into it um so yeah katana has been uh, a labor of love for about a year and i guess two years really uh because originally i put together uh, just a document on my github repository that was sort of supposed to be like a checklist it was supposed to be like hey if you don't know what you're doing or you've hit a wall with the CTF challenge, um, check out this resource that just has a list of things you could try or, or don't forget to try this. Because uh, I was always beating myself up if I was looking at a capture the flag challenge and then yeah. when the write-ups came out, I realized, oh, I just needed to run strings on this specific st uh, on this specific file, or I forgot to try steg hide without a password, or I didn't use steg solve on one specific thing. It was annoying because I think some of the the more guessy challenges <laughs> or the more esoteric <laughs> stuff, uh, sometimes I would just overlook something. So yeah. I made that repository, and it's just it was just originally a text document with Markdown and some suggestions, but I had the thought in my head, well, man, I really want to make a tool that will do this for me, that'll like look through all the low hanging fruit, that'll try and um, go ahead and, I don't know, rip through all the potential tools and tricks and things to beat up a CTF challenge. Uh, and it's funny, uh, I live with I live with my roommates, um, Caleb, you might have seen him in some other videos or some things that I put out. Uh, he had helped kind of create the software for Katana with me, because we were at, Oh it, man, we were we were literally just at a bar. Like we were at Hard Times Cafe. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows that spot, but it was like I don't know. There's a back room that's like totally smoking permitted, and there's pool tables and everything. And we were just <laughs> having a drink. And then I was like, man, I really want to make this thing because I think it would be kind of awesome. Place. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And he was like, no, this is totally doable. Like we could probably put together a framework that might be able to. I don't know, determine what a challenge is and then run things that are applicable to it. And then we can make it like recursive so that once it found new results, it could reassess it and reevaluate it and keep trying to drill down until it found a flag. So we built that. <laughs> um, a lot of people ask though, like, hey, what the heck? Like, why did you make this? This is just helping script kitties. This is just, this is just <laughs> ruining the learning of capture the flag. Uh, and we've kind of, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I got a fun question. Like, do people also ask you, like, you were high when you were creating this? Tool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know, because originally I wanted it just for. Hey, so I stop forgetting to run those stupid things like strings on something specific or stag hide or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then it became kind of so much more because we added in new units and more functionality. And yeah. then when we were like, hey, let's let's put this out to the world, we had that reaction like, why did you make this? Because this is hindering what CTF is all about. It's all about learning. So we kind of had the standpoint like, look, this is only going to help with the low hanging fruit. Like this is just for the baby challenges, the things that could be detected by a computer that don't need like a human eye or some manual testing. So it's not gonna solve everything. It might get you 200 points at the beginning of a CTF, but it's not mm -hmm. gonna get you 2000. It's not gonna make sure that you win. Uh, it's yeah. just to rip through mm -hmm. kind of the baby stuff. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like the point that you have mentioned that it may majorly, you know, focus on the low hanging fruits because that's where most of the CTO players do lack, you know, but yeah, that's really good tool. And the concept behind it is to help out with stuff that can be helped with, you know, and please maintaining what kind of things you might have forgot or might you, you might have missed. That's what commonly CTO players do. But yeah, I really appreciate what kind of framework you have made and kudos to you and your team for that. Thank you. So you're welcome, mate. Um, also, uh, since we're talking about capture the flag, we're talking about strategies and we're talking about skill sets. So um, 
Can you tell me this, like, what are your what are your views on the essence of bug bounty culture? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I really love bug bounty and kind of all that it is and kind of what it stands for <laughs> because uh, it it is all about. For one thing, information security, and, I, and I've heard someone say like the industry is called information security, not insecurity, right? Because as much as we kind of love being red team, as much as we love being pen testers, as much as we love like breaking stuff and doing the sexy hacks, it's all about making things better. Like it's all about actually improving the software. So if you have a bug bounty or a hackathon, the whole thing is so that hey, people can start to break your software so that the developers, so the creator, so the maintainer can make it better. So they know the flaws. Um, so I really, really like the stuff that HackerOne does uh, and plenty of the mm -hmm. other bug bounty programs, bug crowd and everything. Honestly, I wish I could make more time in my life to do it because it'd be super fun and like the rewards are insane. Like you see people that are like, hey, over a million dollars on, on HackerOne, which is crazy. <laughs> It's crazy, actually. Uh, so, how often you do bug bounty? Truth be told, uh, I, I registered with Hacker One. I went through their Hacker One CTF and tried to poke around at it. Um, and man, life life gets in the way between all the other stuff that I'm kind of trying to juggle. Obviously, YouTube is a passion of mine. I obviously have a day job. I obviously have a lot of other projects and things that I like to do. So, uh, I, I hadn't gotten back to it. But I know a lot of the guys in the scene. Uh, Stock Stoke. Uh, Nomsec, yes. they they doing yeah. crazy cool stuff, um, and I I wish I could do that just as well. <laughs> no, but you're doing great job. Kudos to your YouTube channel as well. Thanks. And yeah, you're welcome. So um, you talked about like you do it not that frequent, but just tell me like for a reference, like what would be your go-to exploit when it comes to web application security? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so web is is like my favorite category. I love just kind of experimenting with that stuff because, for one thing, it's like really real world, right? Every single organization or company or enterprise probably has a public facing website, and that's a lot of what bug bounty is. I think there's a lot more cross site scripting, a lot more CSRF, LFI, etc. So, I think web is really really cool. Um, my favorite exploit or i guess my favorite thing that <laughs> that's a funny question uh I, I really like local file inclusion when i find that it's like oh what can i do with this because it's it's a it's just a little bit of a, of a tug yeah. like you can pull on that string and maybe you could leverage it to remote code execution if you can do some log poisoning or maybe you could steal some sessions because okay you can see the location where the php sessions are being stored or hey you could find out how that program ran because you can leak into like proc forward slash proc forward slash self i feel like there's a lot of cool things that can be found and taken advantage of with local file inclusion so if i see that i, I get pretty excited <laughs> i like the sound of it and i really appreciate the way you explained it oh, <laughs> LFI, yeah my favorite has been ssrf uh lfi rfis nice yeah so these are some yeah so we have a little bit in common i can say heck yeah uh, yeah yes it sounds like we're gonna date after this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to happen anyways. So uh, so um, you have been into penetration testing for a few while and uh, just wanted to like discuss a little bit about that as well. So um, what would be your like favorite platform when you talk about somebody beginning into this field or in this domain? So what would you suggest to the big? Uh, hmm. I, get, I guess, can I kind of, I guess, zoom in on that question? When you, when you say platform, do you mean like learning platform? Do you mean like technology? No. Yeah, learning. Learning I'm platform. About okay. Wait. Sweet. So um, it's funny because I, I try to recommend a lot of resources a lot of the time because a lot of people ask. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. for capture the flag stuff, I kind of point people towards Pico. Um, when it comes to like penetration testing and some like red teaming stuff, uh, Hack the Box is obviously in the mix, and that's fantastic. Uh, something that I've really right. found lately and I love, and, and I'm trying to share a lot about it, and, and I'm trying to help people grow and, and learn about that mm -hmm. platform is Try Hack Me. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that one came out like a year and a half ago or some point, and I, I finally jumped on the bandwagon to make some content about it. But it's, I think it's fantastic for learning because their whole philosophy is like, look, here are all the answers. Like, here's how to do it. Here's a guide. Here's a step-by-step process of what you need to do, and here are write-ups that already give you the solutions if you're stuck. So, I think for someone trying to learn, uh, Try Hack mm-hmm. Me is is fantastic. They have a lot of really friendly beginner oriented stuff and they certainly do ramp up with some of their harder stuff too yeah yeah right 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 you're right about it um you already gave out like a lot of resources for the big days i would say like which one's your favorite if you have to name one oh my favorite of the of those resources mm-hmm. sorry i'm thinking <laughs> That's all right. You one of the it. one of the talks that I had tried to give some time ago was um, how to build a CTF team or how to build someone getting into cybersecurity, and I just had this laundry list of different training platforms like, um, <laughs> oh geez, Pico CTF obviously, Hack the Box obviously. There's Ring Zero. There's Micro Corruption. There's Lord of SQL Injection. There's Rop Emporium, Ponable XYZ. There's just so much stuff. Um, so again, we have a list of them. <laughs> one of the one of my favorites that is, I guess, it comes every now and again, so it's hard to keep track because it's not. Oh, I guess they are always online. Uh, the Sands Holiday Hack Challenge. Have you guys heard of that one? Yep. Yeah. Right. So Sands puts out their kind of free learning platform. Uh, as it comes around to Christmas time. And it's always fantastic. Like they really ramped up their stuff in 2015. And now they've mm-hmm. been doing some like red team challenges. And this year they did a couple blue team challenges, but they make the like interactive game and some interactive world to move around in and solve the challenges with, but it's always super high quality. And I, and I learn a ton from that. So I, I, I do really like and would tout the Sans holiday hack challenge. All right, cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, so you just talked about some of your talks that you have been giving out, and I have personally watched some of your videos and besides as well. Thank so you. yeah, that was a good talk. Yeah, you're welcome. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I want to know uh, if you can maybe tell like what has been your roadmap, you know, which gives you this perfection and the skill set. And I am pretty sure like the listeners would like to hear that from you. Okay. Um... Oh geez, I always like I'm always stumped at this question because a lot of people always ask like, "Hey, how do I, how do I get started?" or "What's the what's the trajectory or the ladder or the roadmap?" Um, and all I remember when kind of when I was in I guess college, honestly, uh, I would stay up really really late. And I would try and uh, just solve challenges on over the wire. I would try to solve challenges on Pico. I would try to solve challenges on all those different war games. And if I couldn't solve it, which a lot of the time at the beginning I couldn't, and some of them I still can't, <laughs> uh, I would honestly look up write-ups. I would honestly look at the solutions because that's the best way to learn is like, okay, someone else already solved this. What can I glisten? What can I learn and, and understand from that? Um, because all the information is, is already out there. Like people are all, always willing to share. And that's kind of one of the best things about the whole InfoSec community is that people do want to spread their knowledge. They do want everyone to learn and everyone to be sharp. So they write blog posts. So they make videos. So they put all these resources and cheat sheets together. So when people ask me like, hey, what should I start with? Normally what I tell them is install Linux and try to go through mm-hmm. over the wire bandit so you learn the linux command line and then mm-hmm. once you feel like you're good with excuse me once you feel like you're good with that uh, try and learn python as a programming language and then go tackle pico ctf cuz that's going to like light the fire that's going to make you really excited about it and want to learn more and more that's really good to know that that <laughs> what you just said like it seems like we speak the same language now <laughs> but as you know, there's a lot of times like we also get some questions like this, like what should we start with or how can I build, you know, this kind of a skill set. And we do often have this kind of confusion on telling us like what should we exactly do. I do get questions like how to stay up late at night. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really hard because the way that some people learn is different from person to person, right? Uh, a lot of my good friends just can't stand watching a video, but 
<laughs> Ipsec yeah. puts out incredible stuff for Hack the Box. Obviously, Live Overflow, the Cyber Mentor, just mm -hmm. tons of them are do it in a video form. And sometimes with write-ups, with just a wall of text, sometimes that can be really overwhelming. So it's it's really, really hard to nail down and figure out how a person might learn best. But I think getting hands-on keyboard, like jumping into a Linux command line, then you're going to start bumping around and you're going to learn stuff. So. You're right. Uh, no, you're actually right about it because that's really important because this can be highly variable person to person. So it's sometimes very tough, you know, to just explain a whole lot of people all together, like what should be the roadmap. It can highly differ. Anyways, uh, this was really good what he explained. Um, I also want to know um, on behalf of the whole community, uh, like I have seen like beginners are pretty elusive and pretty confused with the question. And the question is like, which should like, they usually ask which certification should I apply for or uh, and I have no prior experience in the infosec field in the domain and you know what kind of certification I can go with so can you suggest something to them as well like what kind of certification they should go with yeah oh boy uh the certifications is like a whole nother can of worms but I, I totally necessary because you're right uh tons of people ask about it um so when I got started trying to work through certifications. Um, mm -hmm. My philosophy was that I don't want to be like a cert warrior. It's a stupid name. I guess I've heard people say, we're like, oh, you just collect every single certification that you can uh, just for the sake of having it. And I, I find myself today like, oh, crap. I, I have, a, <laughs> I have a, a decent number of certifications and I'm like, crap. Uh, I just kind of Eight bit myself. I, I went against what I was saying. Uh, but I've always wanted to go for like the practical, hands on, applicable, like application oriented, real challenging certifications. That's kind of what I tried for. But disclaimer when I was first getting started and when I needed to get a certification for the kind of the jobs that I was looking at, um, they told me, like, look, dude, we need you to get Security Plus at minimum. We need you to be IAT level two compliant for, I guess, mm -hmm. the US-based Department of Defense stuff. Um, so CompTIA Security Plus is kind of a high level certification that's talking a lot about cybersecurity and the exam is, is multiple choice. So it's not on the keyboard, hardcore, doing real, real stuff. Um, but that's what I started with just to say like, hey, I, can, I know this stuff. I, I learned a little bit about it and I can show for it. So I actually would recommend that for people getting started because Security Plus kind of gives you a wide bird's eye view of everything in the scene. Um, and if you don't want to dive into on the keyboard real lead hacker stuff just yet, I, I would mm -hmm. say, hey, do a little bit of research on Security Plus and see if you feel like it could, it could help you. Once you're done with that, then mm -hmm. totally jump and do some of the cool stuff. OSCP, obviously, if you want to like go off the deep end. Uh, I really, really, really like uh, eLearn Security. They're, I guess they're kind of a, a, a budding new certifying body. And some of, some of the stuff they do with uh, the junior penetration tester, uh, EJPT, that's fantastic. Like They, they have really I, good I learning stuff. Yeah, I saw your certification on Twitter. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Like uh, you're right about a lot of certifications. Can 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 you just like give a minute on CEH or EC Council certificates? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, I picked up CEH. Um, truth be told, it mm -hmm. was sort of for like the HR thing. Like you know, hey, people that are trying to hire you or you're looking for jobs, you're in the job market. <laughs> Some of them will say like, we'd like you to have CEH. Um, mm -hmm. Truth be told, I went for CEH V10, which I think is the latest now, uh, and I know they yep. released the uh, CEH Practical. So I yeah, haven't right. taken the Practical, to be honest. Uh, I did yeah. take the Multiple Choice CEH, and it, it, it was interesting because it was showcasing a lot of different tools, and there's certainly ones that are necessary and ones that you would use for uh, pen testing. Um, but I, I wish I had taken the CEH practical if just to kind of see, okay, how are they asking me to use this? How are they having me do it? Because the multiple choice that's all about the practical stuff without the practical stuff felt a little weird. But I, I, I really wish, and I, I guess I should take that 
practical version of the exam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, in fact, even I'm planning for the practical examination for ECSA now. Nice. Uh, I myself have gone for the CEH MCQ based. So, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it after this podcast. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> sure. Um, so, yeah, you talked about like CEH and these uh, Comcia Plus Security Plus certification covers up a lot of uh, major, you can say, concept information and tools as well, which are necessary. So, um, I, I I just got this question out of the context. Like, how does a successful enumeration depend on a pen test? I mean, what are your tools or your auxiliary that you would recommend for enumeration? Okay. So, oh, man. For one thing, uh, disclaimer, I am not some elite authority uber hacks or uh i'm still learning right i think we all are so i don't know as much uh kind of advanced windows pen testing as i'd like to some of the stuff with active directory that i think that'd be crazy cool and i want to learn more about that uh but bloodhound is a quick and cool tool to throw in there if you're doing that stuff or evil win rm i want to learn a lot more about those um i guess kind of my go-to because a lot of the stuff that i look at lately is is linux I, again, uh, also a little bit of web in there because they have, typically have an outward facing website. Uh, if it's totally allowed, if it's in scope, I will absolutely throw um, GoBuster <laughs> or, or DurBuster or PyBuster, yeah, I think is a really cool one that uh, one of my, some, someone in my Discord server, Raj, had put together, which is crazy cool. And mm -hmm. Nikto, I think I, I always use, use Nikto. Actually, fun tip for those that are, looking at OSCP, uh, mm -hmm. Nikto will help you a lot. <laughs> I agree on that, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is surprising because I, I feel like Nikto, you kind of just put it off to the wayside. It's kind of easy to forget because sometimes it'll help you. Sometimes it just spews out a ton of false positives. Uh, exactly. But yeah. Been there, done that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So... Uh... Yeah, after this, uh, thanks for your um, shedding some lights. And yeah, you're right about this thing. Like, we are all learning, you know. I'm also learning right now on Active Directory because OECP just have changed their standards, and I think I need to upgrade as well. So, yeah, well, let's, like, divert a bit from the regular topic, right? Sure. Yeah. And um, I want you to keep going, like, <clears throat> we want to know more about your achievements and your milestones that you have achieved, you know, like preaching knowledge in various topics and on different kind of talks, different kind of events that you had been. So uh, like from your basic ciphers to real life based exploits, you know, so what's a special kind of message you would give or you, you would like to encourage a body with people, you know, who lose patience easily and just like going through a phase what kind of message you would like to give out to them? Yeah, okay. Um, I guess I'll I'll try and answer that one in in, in two parts. I guess two mm -hmm. two cornerstones for what I like to try and, and tell people. Um, you hear a lot of time, kind of the offensive security motto: uh, "Try harder," right? And mm -hmm. I always kind of like struggle with that one because I, I get what they're saying. I know uh, we all we all do that. We all try hard. We wouldn't be doing it if we weren't already trying hard. Um, <laughs> and sometimes I don't. I get the wrong vibe from that, or it feels very. I hate I hate the word, but I, it feels very gatekeeper esque. Like, hey, go Google it yourself, or RTFM, GTFO. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I. I in my head, I kind of change the way that I that I hear that. Um, whenever I think of try harder, I, I kind of change it in my mind to uh, keep trying. Because I remember when I mentioned some time ago when I was staying up late, when I was trying to like every day that I could, if I could find time for it, I'd I'd go after this stupid challenge in Behemoth from Over the Wire because I that was the first time I'd ever done a buffer overflow, and I. I could not understand it for the life of me. Like, what are these knob sleds? Why is this EIP thing so important? How am I controlling that? I don't understand why the bytes have to be in this order rather than that order. <laughs> there, were, there were like a lot of struggle points, but mm -hmm. try harder doesn't help. It's, hey, keep trying. <laughs> like, don't give up. Even if you fail, even if you want to take a break, I do that literally all the time. 
I don't know. Some people like. I feel like I'm just doing stuff all the time. I gotta be honest. Sometimes I will take a break and like go play Super Smash Bros for a little bit, just because I need to. <laughs> and that's totally a thing. Uh, yeah. So, so that that's sorry. That's position number one is keep trying, uh, and then kind of position number two is share. Like totally tell people what you're working on, what you're learning, how, what tools you're using, etc. And I think that really comes with the whole community vibe is that we're, we're all trying to learn. We're all trying to spread the knowledge. So keep working at it and then share. Yeah, no, I really appreciate the second point, especially that, yes, of course, like the more you share, the more you know about it and the more you'll grow the community by yourself as well. Uh, One more thing I would like to add to this because, excuse me. So we're talking about it. And uh, one more thing I need to tell that I just, this thing just strike my mind that my friend, used to keep telling me this, like every single detail is counted. So yes, even if you're failing, might be that it's going to be helpful maybe in the future because oh, yeah. you're just yeah. discovering a whole new concept altogether. Absolutely. So, yeah, you should, as he said, John said, like, keep trying is the thing and share. And shout out to my friend Narendra Jangra for just telling me this thing. Every single detail is counted. All right, so moving forward, um, you shared a lot. Uh, we have already talked about your events that you go to. So anything memorable that you remember from any of the events or you like to tell something about it? Any fun thing that you did? Oh, boy. There are a lot. <laughs> um, just, just tell us the funniest one. The funniest one. Okay. So this is, uh, I guess, something that you might... Uh, if anyone is, I guess, keeping up with some of my stuff, uh, we recently took place in the B-Sides Nova or Northern Virginia Capture the Flag, and that was a, a King of the Hill style game. So it was it was pen test oriented where there were a lot of boxes in the range and you were supposed to, hey, find the vulnerability, exploit them, get on the machine, and then mm-hmm. lock it down so you can make it your machine, like King of the Hill. Like, um wow. So we had uh, myself and my teammates, the guys that I live with, and just because it was a local event, which was a lot of fun. Once we got on the machine, um, we could see, okay, some team members are, are some other teams, external players are booting us out, and that was annoying. Um, and they actually had a little kind of game mechanic where there was an APT or someone else already on the box that could kick you out. So eventually because this was a two-day event we were able to have the overnight to go home and and rest up and work on it so whenever i do an in-person game i'm like pretty gung-ho about it (laughs) so i'll spend that (laughs) night like trying to script things or trying to make tools or help build the arsenal so that the next day like hey we can we can really go guns blazing so i wrote a couple things that were like a an access script and a maintain script so the access script would be able to like automatically log in as soon as it saw either, hey, default credentials or uh, the box was reset because they would revert every hour. So there was more of a chance for someone else to break in. And the mm-hmm. the maintain script, the maintain script would try to, okay, send out a beacon so that we have control of this machine. It would um, try and look if any other team members or any other teams were using their own beacon. And then it would try and like kill that and stop it. But the okay. best part, the one that I guess cause it's kind of funny, <laughs> if, if funny is the answer we're going for, um, mm-hmm. we would cat dev you random uh, and redirect it into the other uh, PTYs or the pseudo terminals. <laughs> so if anyone else was on the machine that wasn't us, all of a sudden mm-hmm. their terminal would just be flooded with random characters and bytes and escape sequences. And uh, <laughs> some guy behind us had the sound on mm-hmm. on their computer and somehow oh. randomly it would hit the escape sequence for the, the terminal alarm or the bell. Right. <laughs> so behind us, I could hear, as soon as I'd fired the script off, they were like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just kind of funny because they'd be like swearing, they'd be swearing and throwing things and be like, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. That's that's nice. Stupid uh, hacker humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I hope that was intentional. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty more fun. Uh, but that's good. Uh, so this thing that you just told just gave me two more questions for you. 
So you told me like you had been practicing a lot and you live with your friends and you keep going with this. So like fun question, like how much CDFs you have played throughout your career, like professional career? Holy cow. <laughs> I have no idea. So um, uh, I guess okay. background, um, I guess I had started in, a, in the capture the flag scene maybe mm-hmm. six years ago now, five years ago. Um, yeah. There was a there was a competition called Cyber Stakes that was um, for a lot of the United States Department of Defense and the, the military members. So I had kind of taken place in that, and it was incredible. It was the first time I'd ever seen something like it. It was the first time I ever heard of CTF time, first time I ever heard of Over the Wire. It was like, man, that just opened the floodgates because now I want to learn all this stuff, and I want to get good at it, and that was a lot of fun. So... From 2014, 2015, whenever there was a an event on CTF time and I could try and make it, I would. Uh, so I have old write-ups, and I'm sure there's over hundreds, maybe even I don't even know if if a thousand is is even correct or not, but I would think tons. I would think over a hundred, for sure. I, I, I must say, by the way you're telling me, it must be more than 500, 600. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's weird because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not improving. How come I'm not improving? How come I'm not learning anything new? Uh, and I, to be honest, thinking mm-hmm. back to, to those days, and I, and I know I had mentioned it a lot, uh, because I was able to stay up late and try those things, that was all in the realm of, of academia when I didn't have regular life kind of getting in the way between a day job, between um, a significant other that I really want to spend time with in social life, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> People say like, man, they hate being in school. Um, to be honest, I think that time, if you seize it and you realize it like, dude, this is all the time I'm going to ever get to really hunker down and learn stuff that you got to, you got to fight for it. <laughs> there were that some makes- golden days where you could study and just do what, just the things that you wanted to do. <laughs> the good old days, huh? I don't know. It's weird because no one, no one thinks of maybe their school as oh the good old days. But I remember just being like a an information gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just make you nostalgic? A bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. So okay, let's move on further. Like, uh, let's talk about your creation, Katana. So you made your own tool. You coded by yourself and with your friends. So um. For the beginners, what kind of languages you would suggest? Like For sure. Um, all right, I'm going to go a couple different places in this uh, question. Mm-hmm. Um, my immediate answer is learn Python. Python is absolutely what I would recommend. It is absolutely a hacker's language. It can do so much. There's tons of built-in libraries. It's so easily extensible with other libraries. Uh, Python is absolutely my weapon of choice. That is the sword that I reach for when it's like a knee-jerk reaction. If there's something that I want to do, I'll do it in Python. Um, oh. I guess background that... on that... Sorry, did you have something? No, that's it. Um, when I was learning, when I first got started, um, my dad... <laughs> my dad was the one that taught me like HTML, and my dad taught me CSS, and then my dad... Yeah, uh, and that was all stuff to like build out a, a stupid website because I wanted to have a I wanted to have a website when I was like nine years old, and yeah. and, <laughs> and then I was like, oh man, I could I could get my own server so I could host my own website, and then like well if I want to get a server, I guess I need some hardware and I don't know what to do to make a website hosted on a server, and then I found Linux. And when I was reading all about Linux, uh, I found Richard Stallman and I found Eric S. Raymond. And you know how every kid like will Google how to be a hacker or like how to make video games. Uh, somehow, uh, yeah. <laughs> somehow I found Eric S. Raymond's blog that was like, if you want to be a hacker, you need to know Python and you need to run Linux. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and and that's why I opted for, for Python. Um, that's, that's when... Sorry, can I add just one more? Sure, sure. Um, Because you mentioned Katana uh, and uh, why Mm -hmm. we wrote that in in Python. Uh, Originally, there was a lot of talk. Like, it would be cool to make this in something like Rust, because I know, oh, there's so much, like, 
mainstream mm-hmm. cool hipsters that are loving Rust, uh, and, be, and I needed to learn it so I could try that. Or we thought like, oh, let's write it in Go because that would be super fast and be crazy for all the concurrency stuff. Uh, right, and we right. we tried to write it, and then we're like, this this just isn't working for us. We can't we can't prototype. We can't develop the way we want to. Uh, we mm-hmm. were just fumbling, so I we we just went for our, our tried and true Python. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. Uh, I in fact I have been like using Python for almost like three four years now, nice. and yeah. I can totally relate to it. Like why Python? All right, so uh, I got to I I just got a little bit of a glimpse of your past, like how you started. So, uh, like you know, everybody here is struggling and hustling enough in the security domain, and they are trying out to share those stuff as well. They are making blogs and they are making YouTube channels. They are making communities like we are trying out as well. So uh, I want to know from your perspective, like what kind of problems did you face when you started in the beginning? You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you, if you like go through the deep dives and the records of my, uh, my channel and uh, the archives, you can see there's some videos that are out there that are like 10 or 11 years old. And there's me messing with like game maker <laughs> and an adventure maker, some baby stuff. Um, and I remember for the longest time just waiting to see if that could ever take off. Um, because mm-hmm. I wanted it to grow and it was a lot of fun to put them together, but it would be, it's even more fun if people watch it, <laughs> if people enjoy it. Um, so I kind of flatlined and had those growing and would try to do stuff for like programming tutorials. So I tried to teach Python when I was way too young. I tried to make videos on Windows Batch when I was way too young. And those still exist. Those are still out there, but that's not really kind of what my channel is now. So when I started to do the capture the flag stuff those years ago, I started to record those. Um, and those kind of right. grew a little bit, but to be honest, I reached out to live overflow, which I'm sure everyone mm-hmm. knows. And I asked mm-hmm. them like, Hey dude, do you want to do Google CTF together? Or do you want to like tackle something that we could, we could do something together on Because you're sitting there at like 200,000 subscribers and I'm here with 10. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so that would give you mm-hmm. that would give you a good push. Yeah, you know, and honestly, that that's kind of what it was. Is I I literally had I think ten thousand at the time, which isn't which isn't incredible, but it's also not nothing, which I guess. Um, but when I did that video with him, it's like the old Google CTF video. I remember that jumped me up to like hey twenty thousand, and then I was like oh dude mm-hmm. now we're now we're climbing so let's move keep moving keep moving. Uh, and that's always been just a hedonic treadmill, like something that I really want to do because it's it's fun. But I guess my advice, would, the actual original question there, <laughs> um, <laughs> don't hesitate to reach out to the people that you feel like are in a solid spot. Like when I was like fanboying over Live Overflow, when I was like, oh man, he's got everything set because he has X amount of followers or he does X amount of things. It's cheesy mm-hmm. to think that way because you can't compare yourself to others. Um, something that mm-hmm. I learned is like, you can't compare yourself to who other people are today. You need to compare yourself to who you were yesterday because that's the best delta. Like that's that's the best baseline is I see how you can improve. And if you mm-hmm. feel like that there are giants out there, there's nothing wrong with just reaching out to them. Like saying, hey man, I really love the stuff that you do. Can you lend a hand? Like I'm trying to grow my own thing too. And live was fantastic. And when we met last year, that was incredible. Um, but they're all people, right? We're all people. And I think a lot of us, I hope, and I, it seems to be in the community that we're in, a lot of people are extremely friendly and want people to learn and get better. So reach out, don't hesitate, be, be a friend. Exactly. A little help is never harmful. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that was amazing talking to you, man. So this is the last question I have for you. Um, This might be a bit more, you know, disclosing a little bit more of your future plans. So what are your future plans in this domain? I mean, what are you planning to do? What kind of good things we are going to see? Oh, boy. (laughs) Are you making Katana (laughs) (laughs) 2.0? I don't know. Oh, man. So. A lot of people um, have been asking 
like, hey, dude, can you make a course? Can you put out something on Udemy or something? Uh, because a lot of people might want something like that. They like the way that you they like the way that you talk. They like the way that you teach. Um, and I and I'm really flattered by that. I really love kind of everyone's support, and I I cannot say thank you enough for that sort of thing. Um, and it's easy to get really pie in the sky and and think about like, wow, what what else can I do? Because um, I want to mm-hmm. build things. I want to make things. I want to keep putting out content. Um, I'd like to keep kind of ponying around uh, a capture the flag competition that I built, that I put together. I'd like to build something into Discord, and I've had a lot of thoughts for this, uh, because our Discord server, we want to have a lot more engagement and a lot more conversation. So I wanted to have a CTF that was literally built into Discord, where everything is public. Like, you can request a challenge, and it'll put it in the same channel that everyone else is in. You can submit a flag in the exact same channel everyone else is in. Because the way that it would work is that the challenges would be dynamic and generated solely for that user. And that might look like craziness. I have no idea. But that's been kind of fun. I've been uh, I've been tinkering with that. Uh, I've also been trying to put together a little auto CTFD generator that will help spin up a CTFD instance with like the dynamically regenerated challenges so you don't have to deal with that interface because that's kind of annoying. Um Sounds cool. I want to keep making videos, you know, like there's so much on the to-do list. Um, And if more people want a course, I'd love to do that too. It's, it's funny because uh, you got to think about like life and how annoying Mm -hmm. money is (laughs) the, the necessity of finances, because Obviously, I put advertisements on some of my videos, and it would be incredible if I could keep making this into something that I could really flourish in, but I support is necessary for that. So, hey, what if I put out a stupid, hey, like John Hammond Security, obviously not with that stupid name, but <laughs> everyone does it, right? You, you look at all the other other people out in the industry, yeah. and they've, they've, they roll in their own thing. Right, see them all. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think that's bad because if, if you do something and you if people like the way that you do it, well, they'll come to you. They'll go to you. And that's why having your own show or having your own business or having your own thing is, is necessary. So maybe in however many years I'd, I'd like to try that. I have no idea. <laughs> sure, why not? Because you're doing it. You, you're really good at making YouTube videos. And I'm going to say that. And you have been doing a great job for a long time, I see. Well, thank you. And... Yeah, you're welcome. And I really appreciate the efforts that you are putting out in the community and sharing this much knowledge. And I appreciate your time that you gave us and on this podcast and shedding light on some questions that people have been asking for a long time. So anything that you would like to add in the end of the note? Oh, for sure. How, how do we do? Is this is this too long? Is this a perfect time? Like, how do we do? That's a perfect time. Go ahead. Cool. Um... No, I mean, this This has been fantastic. I'm honestly really, really flattered. Uh, I, I try not to... I don't see myself as someone that anyone should particularly, like, be curious about or care about or want to know the opinions of. So I think it was Muffin that had asked me, like, hey, can we do a show with you? Can we just chat with you? And then seeing all the questions that you guys had prepared, it's just, uh, I don't know, it really... It's surreal, and, I, and I'm very, very thankful. So thank you guys so much for wanting to do this with me. It's it's an absolute honor and pleasure. So, John, it's all our pleasure. It was really nice talking to you as well, and thank you so much for coming out. And yeah, we will be in touch for definitely, and uh, I'm pretty sure like people are going to reach you out more now because you have already cleared a lot of stuff, and they have already been curious about a lot of things. Um, I wish you good luck for whatever future plans you have, and uh, I'm I'll be really glad if I can be a part of it as well later. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, absolutely. Right. Thank you, man. The same to you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And on this note, guys, we are ending up our today's podcast. It's been really nice talking to this amazing guy. He have told us a lot of stuff, and I hope you enjoyed this whole discussion as well. Um, if you have a question, reach us out at Sakarmi, or you can reach John uh, directly as well. He's available on social media, on Twitter. We'll leave all the handles in the post as well. And thank you so much, John, again. You have a great day. And uh, on this note, we mm-hmm. end up the session. Thanks, guys. Take care. Take care. See you soon. 
So that's it for today's podcast for Sec Army. We hope you enjoyed the stuff and see you guys soon. It's your host, Terabyte, and keep tuning into Sec Army. Right, John. Thank you so much, man. Sweet. Yeah, this was a blast. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was nice talking to you, mate. Appreciate it. I hope it was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was, actually. I hope I didn't uh, stomp on you too much whenever you wanted to interject or something. I, I realized, like, oh, crap, I, I'm just I'm just rambling, and I feel bad. <laughs> I don't know, man. It wasn't like that. It was, it was. I really, like, enjoyed whatever you were telling about, and it was really funny and indulgent myself. So that's good. Awesome. Thanks, all right. Anything else we would like to talk about? Or... Um, I would like to, I guess, share this on my channel. Is that something you guys are totally cool with? Uh, yeah, we'll be cool with it. Do you have the recording? Can you share that with us as well? Yes. Yeah, I have uh, I have the video that's still going. So. <laughs> yeah, mate. Uh, it will be really good if you can share the video as well. And uh, yeah, um, or maybe Muffin or somebody else will be like getting in touch with you for the same. Right. Okay. Do you guys care when, or do you need me to? Do you need me to wait a few days, or however much time in between putting something out or uploading this? Uh, mate, I believe Muffin will be a better guy to talk about this. I guess he's typing it, and he'll let you know like when we are going to, because we are still in the prog process of making the posters, you know, and we're gonna make it a big thing that we are, you know, gonna put up a podcast with you. Sweet. So, sure. And thank you so much, mate. This was really nice. Appreciate it. Same to you. Take care, guys. All right. You too. Take care. Stay safe.